I think we started off well in 1999 and um, we insisted somehow that we wanted to do a multi, multi-party democracy. Uh, even though uh, coming fresh out of a military regime uh, or military administration, uh, we are somehow sort of uh, uh, used to a regimented way of doing these things. And uh, after the experiment of uh, the Second Republic between 1979 and 1983, uh, the Babangida administration through the botched Third Republic introduced a two-party system, which a lot of people thought was a bit saner, and um, uh, it might not give a lot of room for a lot of participation in terms of people running around creating their own political parties. But at the same time, it just sees through um, um, certain things, and then you could have um, two dominant political parties. Uh, But in 1999, as I was told, uh, the military before they left, they decided to return back to multi-party democracy, where um, uh, slowly but surely it would it can evolve into a two or three party system um, uh, organically, not by any regimented uh, instructions or or, or or coordination or control. And then 20 years later, here we are, 21 years later, sorry, we are here. Um, um, it looks as if uh, finally from 2015 to date, we probably might have two strong parties. And uh, even though they have serious, serious, serious issues within themselves, uh, the constant uh, bickering of back and forth of whether or not There's internal party democracy power, as a lot of people seem to think it is. Uh, parties are not based on ideologies. But when we started out, I never deceived myself to think that uh, our political parties should be built around ideologies, and, and I remain dogged on it. I realized that um, in Nigeria, if there is anything, uh, politics is just basically about interest the ability of anyone to successfully navigate through either being in government or being in the, at the helms of any political party is the ability of that person to settle or to you know, balance interests of different contending forces that might come along. Uh, um, do we like to see an ideologically based political parties? Maybe yes. But the reason why we have not been able to see purely ideologically based political parties is because 95% of Nigeria's problems are still basic problems. So all political parties will be talking about the same thing because we have still not been able to feed ourselves, clothe ourselves very well, sanitize ourselves very well, shelter ourselves very well. We do not have food security as much as we want to. We don't have basic health care. We do not have infrastructure. So if you do not have the basic necessities of life, no political party will start talking about any other ideology other than those basic things of life. So from 1999 to date, every politician or political party promises the same things because those things have not been overcome yet by the generation of people. So uh, ideology might come later when we have reached a certain crescendo of overcoming the basic necessities of life. Then we can talk about how to get there. Because that's, I think, what ideology is. Is either you can decide on how to get to a particular point, you can agree on the point. You know, ideology depends on how you want to get there. Now, um, all our political parties have issues. I've been in APP to AMPP to CPC and now in APC. We're hoping that APC is here to stay. Uh, Everybody knows about the stories of what we went through in the last few months as a political party. Um, hopefully this is an opportunity for us to resurrect ourselves and, and get ourselves going and build a really, really, really institutional uh, platform where people could grow and could, people could make careers out of uh, politics. I don't like when people tell me that um, um, politics is not a career. It could be a career because um, uh, um, um, there's nothing really bad about it unless you make it bad. So. 
Um, we have party deficits, absolutely. Are we working towards making it better? Uh, yes, you could try as much as possible. Uh, the system um, focuses too much on governance and forgets about the platform. People don't care how you get there, they just want you to get there. Uh, I heard the last speaker talking about um, uh, saying that people are looking for good governance. And once you have that, you do not care about region or religion, uh, caste or creed or anything. Unfortunately, that is true. That is what we want to, sorry, not unfortunately. Unfortunately, that is not entirely accurate as far as I'm concerned, because I think people still in a society where the resources are scarce, then politics of identity play a vital role um, and in defining uh, where these things go. And people see the person that looks like them or, play, or prays like them or prays to the same God as they do or speaks the same language as they do uh, as somehow a comforting idea of saying that they are no longer second class. So it's a competition of being who are the first class citizens at a particular point in time, depending on who is occupying the most important position in the land at that time. Uh, as unfortunate as that is, uh, maybe if we have good governance, like he mentioned, we probably wouldn't pay attention to all those kind of things. Uh, that's what the political parties are supposed to be providing. Unfortunately, that hasn't been the case in the last 21 years. And uh, we are hoping that we will be able to change that as we move along and hopefully we'll be able to evolve into something really better. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you very much, Ishmael. Here, uh, before you know, I have uh, just a follow up question. You said you do not believe in ideology politics. Now, um, if I just no, I, I didn't say that. I didn't say that. I said initially, I know I am, I did not deceive myself that our political parties would be based on ideology because our basic problems then are the basic necessities of life. So, all of us will be promising the same thing. PDP okay. will promise the same thing. We will promise the same thing because we are still battling with basic issues of life. Okay, thanks for that clarification because um, <laughs> I wanted to speak on that because I thought that's what I had. Now, because I mean, obviously, I understand that um, ideologies could help us, you know, drive the needed, or, or rather, the party ideology could actually help drive the needed uh, point to, you know, to, uh, drive the party to a point where people know what this party stands for. Like uh, uh, Professor Femi said before, that APC is left, it's, it's a leftist party and, and a welfareist party. Now, if a party is a welfareist party, it, it, it should be expected that, you know, everyone will know if, if this party comes in, if you don't have a job, there is certain amount, irrespective of how small that money is, then there might be another party, a party B, that will be, oh, if they come in, these are uh, mercantilist, capitalist party. They always talk about privatizing everything from A to Z. So there must be that ideological underpinning in order to help push whatever that party stands for. Isn't that the way it ought to be? And what is your party, for instance, doing when it comes to these ideologies, what is it that they are consciously doing to push these ideologies or to work on their ideologies? Because Professor mentioned that the restructuring and the welfare like uh, trader money and uh, the other one, uh, conditional cash transfer as one of the uh, uh, welfareist um, you know, uh, uh, things they are doing. Question then is, if the party is welfareist, why are they doing one and forgetting the other? Why are they going into it, which is part of what they promised, okay? So why do you now forget the other one, which is also unbundling the exclusive list that you also uh, promised? So what is your party doing? If I may take that direct question to you, if you still hear me. Yes, I can still hear you. Um, I think that's a very good question. And then my simple answer would be that <laughs> it will shock you to know that the conditional cash transfer that we expanded, we found when we came in, we found that already it was ongoing, even though we didn't even the PDP. Yes. So that's exactly what I'm saying. You know, PDP had Keke Napeb, had poverty alleviation, had all those things. The same thing. We just expanded our own. Uh,
I think, obviously, I would love to hear your thoughts on that, but I think um, your network is not permitting. On that note, I would want to now, um, well, you know, until he comes back, on this note, I would want to go back now to the, um, hold on, I think I have, um, I would now want to go back to former Minister of Sports, that is Solomon Dalung. Uh, Mr. Dalung, can you please put your camera on and you are now on. You have uh, uh, three minutes to make your submission. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Well, um, uh, thank you very much and thank you for creating the enabling environment for ideas like this to be uh, cross-pollinated. And I think um, the, the conversation is apt, um, coming at a time where we are dealing with uh, public health crisis. And um, unfortunately, we are now having political crisis alongside. I, I think um, basically our challenges has to do uh, with the nature of uh, the political culture uh, we have in place then the political environment itself and the institutional infrastructure. Now, in this country, when you talk about ideological politics, it looks somehow strange. On paper, yeah, we have the manifestos of the political parties, but in practice, no. So we only have political manifestos as just documents for soliciting of votes. And um, while in this, and we're dealing with a, a political crisis. So these deficits can only be resolved favorably when we will have one, our intellectuals beginning to develop interest in our politics. Then secondly, the restructuring of the entire political architecture to take into consideration our culture and tradition as a people and not borrowing from elsewhere things that we might not be able to implement here. And I look forward to a time where, where we may have ideological driven political parties in Nigeria that will drive our politics. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for that uh, quick intervention. On this note, I would want to also bring uh, Ankyo Briggs um, to quickly, in three minutes, make your contribution. Thank you very much for joining us this evening. Um, thank you, Mazi. Can you hear me? It appears you are using two devices. Please, can you? Pardon? There is a feedback. It appears you are using two devices. Can you hear me? Yes, 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 we can hear you, but it appears you're having an echo. Thank you. Well, I wonder why. Okay, very, um, very quickly, from the conversation that, um, that I've been on for the past uh, couple of hours, um, there is a confirmation definitely here that um, our political parties don't have... Um, any form of ideology. I mean, the, uh, the contributors uh, have said so, which is really the problem um, that we have, because you cannot uh, be in a democracy in a country as huge as, uh, as Nigeria, as diverse as Nigeria is, 36 states, and we just don't have any ideology at all and have no intention of um, having political parties or a political party that will have uh, an ideology. We have uh, people coming into uh, politics, thinking that politics is a business, uh, thinking, uh, not seeing that politics is a service, uh, it's a service to the people. And so I truly um, do not see how we are going to be able, uh, how we're going to be able to uh, uh, to move to if we're not prepared to uh, to uh, to divorce ourselves 
from the um, from the idea that politics is about interest. Uh, politics in Nigeria, in my opinion, over the past uh, 22 years that I have uh, been doing what I have been doing, um, politics has become an issue of uh, almost cult. It's cult-like. You know, people, the same people keep reinventing themselves, bringing themselves, making the decisions. So now, moving forward, um, the, uh, the critical word that is missing from uh, members of uh, mostly the APC, I didn't hear anybody say here whether they were FDP or not. But for me, that doesn't matter because I believe only in what a person is going to be able to deliver to me and not necessarily uh, his, uh, his, political, his political party. So um, the, the, the fact that the, the all progressive parties come into power um, with certain things, uh, which it has absolutely delivered on nothing. One of those things uh, is structuring. I laugh when I hear uh, people say restructuring because I was in the uh, 2014, um, 2014 uh, uh, conference, and even while the conference or even before the conference uh, took place, both the president today and El Rufai uh, made it very clear that they didn't believe in the conference and therefore will not implement anything that will come out of that conference when, it, when, they, uh, when they get into power. So I'm surprised that we are still expecting, but I, I suppose we will keep hope alive, but we are still expecting that this government is going to actually restructure Nigeria. But I believe that that is the only way forward that we must restructure Nigeria because we have gone through um, uh, the, the, the past five years now have been years, uh, years of lies. We have been told the Nigerian electorate have been deceived, have been told a lot of, a lot of lies from the moment of wanting to take power. And the aim, as far as I'm concerned, of the people in power today is to take power and hold on to power. Now, uh, one of the contributors, um, one of the contributors said uh, something that I think Adamu, what he described coming from the amalgamation uh, position to where Nigeria is today, it's very simply, I will describe his uh, input as emphatically being on the side of restructuring. He has spoken what he contributed means that Nigeria must be restructured, Nigeria must devolve power to the states, and very simply that we must, uh, we must practice um, um, federalism. It is a shame that there are young, uh, a pity that there are young people, because uh, some of the contributors uh, are younger than, uh, uh, than me, there are young people today that are actually saying, you know, we know that we don't have ideology, and I actually don't foresee us having uh, parties that have ideology. So I'm worried because then I see people in their 40s who will be in their 60s in 20 years' time uh, talking about not having uh, political parties that, uh, that, that, that will have um, ideology. Definitely, um, Nigeria should not care who becomes the president. If truly we restructure Nigeria, we devolve power, and we very simply uh, practice a federalism. Now, uh, coming back to um, what we should do with this time that we have, which is COVID-19. COVID-19, in my opinion and my experience, has shown, demonstrated very clearly that the states can and must take care of themselves irrespective of the fact that um, uh, there is this uh, thing about sharing of oil, where today the price of oil has gone down. And to me, I hope it continues to go down anyway, because I think that's the only way we're going to learn how to, um, how to survive outside of just sitting down and going to Abuja every month to collect something that is coming from just 
one particular place. And um, Adamu had demonstrated very clearly that it is possible for, uh, for Nigeria to go directly the other way. He has proven, which we all know, that each state in Nigeria can survive on its own. So basically, we must begin to, if we're not going to uh, begin to insist on the breakup of Nigeria, we must begin to insist on restructuring Nigeria and um, uh, having uh, practicing federalism and actually having self-determination within Nigeria. We must have self-determination within Nigeria where each state, we, I don't see the business of federal government. Uh, uh, I don't see the, the, the business of the federal government of having an interest in a federal university in a state or a road in river state. What is the business of federal government? The, the federal government has no business if it will take its hands off the resources that is in river state so that river state can use the resources to look after herself and her people and develop herself and her people and we pay tax. If we are prepared to do that, then in my opinion, there is still hope for Nigeria. But if we're not prepared to do that and we want to keep what we have, this 1999 constitution that uh, is not a constitution of we the people, but a constitution of they the people, they themselves, whoever they were that put this uh, constitution together. It is a shame to, to actually come to the acceptance that Obasanjo was sworn in as a civilian uh, president, as a democratic president, without even this 1999 uh, constitution actually being properly printed and, uh, and, uh, and used. So uh, I still take it that Nigeria must accept that it has to restructure itself. Its policies must change. We must practice federalism and the states must be allowed to govern themselves. President Buhari has no business in knowing, uh, in doing something for the people that are poor in river state. The people that are poor in river state are poor in river state because the federal government is taking away the resources that belong to the university. Thank, Thank you very, you very much. much.